Welcome to Aqua Aquaponics. We're currently out here in our growing dome near the end of January. Although the winter isn't over yet and the polar vortex is creeping its way down here next week, we thought this was a great time for us to just recap what we've learned this past winter and share some of our future plans for this space. Awkward. This past winter, we're actually really surprised how close we were to being able to operate through the entire winter. Between our climate battery, our pond, and our solar air heater, we were able to get enough heat in here on sunny days to make it through most of our colder nights. Our solar air heater really exceeded our expectations and we were impressed with its ability to operate even in moderately sunny days. When the sun hit it, it didn't take long for it to begin taking the air in the dome, which on colder days was hovering around zero C, and then start to push it in at 40 to 50 C almost immediately. This was really great for getting some extra heat into this space that we could then move through our climate battery or our raised beds to get just a little bit more into our thermal mass. On the climate battery side, we really noticed a change come mid-December. Up until that point, we were still getting temperature increases on the air moving through it, but then you could see and feel the point where the air going in was the same as the air that was coming out. We've had some really sunny days these past few weeks and we've used that time to pump heat back into the ground, but mid-December to January really meant a dormant phase for this space. For most of last year, we were running our climate battery either on sunlight alone, or we operated it in time intervals, on during the middle of the day and the middle of the night. Once we have the ability to run our fans whenever we can, we can operate our climate battery on a thermostat like it was actually designed. Our pond was also a resource, although for us, this is one area that we know we really underutilized. End of December, the pond froze over. You can see the pond. It's pretty cool, frozen solid. We eventually picked up a de-icer to melt everything and add a bit of extra heat. But up until that point, we weren't doing anything active other than throwing a cover on it. The volume of water that we have gives us a lot of potential heat storage moving forward. From running our de-icer through our Buletti though, we've learned that it likely isn't feasible to use an electric pond heater with our off-grid setup. However, we are looking at maybe using evacuated tubes to just dump that much more heat into the pond during the sunnier days. Because water has such a high specific heat capacity, it really takes a long time for it to heat up and cool down, and getting as much heat as we can into the pond will be one of our priorities next winter because it'll allow us to get through those colder evenings, but also likely a couple of days after that as well. So our main takeaway is that we're really close, and by using the pond and climate battery more efficiently, we might be able to get there next winter. The other thing that we're gonna try is adding a layer of poly on the inside of the dome. Our only insulation above the beds is that dual wall polycarbonate, and we think that by isolating that six inch gap, we can likely get some gains. We're gonna try this on the north side as well. We're not sure if we'll do this for the entire dome or just go to a certain height, but that's definitely a low cost thing that we can try right away next win winter. One other thing that we'll have next year is our solar array and a bit of battery storage. As mentioned before, this will allow us to be more efficient with our climate battery. It allows potentially dump some heat into the pond and it will also give us the ability to maybe run some grow lights. We've noticed that the shorter days really led to a lot of stuff just going dormant. We didn't start until later, so we didn't have the benefit of large mature fruit producing plants in the space, but lack of light was a real thing. We're thinking about adding grow lights next winter and then having them give us three to four more hours near the end of the day. Because we didn't have a ton of mature plants, we also didn't water that heavy, which meant we didn't get the full benefit of our hugaculture raised beds as things started to break down. We have started some composting in here and have already observed some heat being given off as things start to happen. As we get more material being composted, we will get some heat from that as well. Our sub pod is still doing great. We added a heat mat when we lost the heat in the space because we wanted to give our worms a good start for this coming spring. But they've been getting bigger each week and we can continue to feed them, albeit a little bit slowly. We have a lot of things happening this spring, including our off-grid solar system, 
some permaculture principles being applied as we landscape the area outside of the dome, and then also some composting as we get better at it. Pretty soon we'll be bringing in some peppers and herbs that we've started indoors under lights. And before we know it, we'll be thinking about how we're going to get this space cooler in the warmer summer months. Please share what we're doing and make sure you subscribe down below. As we come upon springs, things will really start to pick up in here. And we look forward to sharing our journey and keeping you up to date every step of the way. Thanks for checking out Awkward Aquaponics. We'll catch you next time. Awkward.